everyone welcome back to another episode of Great Beards Garage uh, I kind of got ahead of myself on this one I got all just about all the footage already recorded for what I'm doing today so I'll let you know we're going to be do uh, cutting out the mounting portion of the rear brake lever um, going to do that over here on my vise with my ankle grinder then after I'm done cutting it out we're going to take it over to the shop smith I'm going to use a disc sander attachment with it and we're going to do some shaping on that and then once that's to my liking we're going to start doing the assembly of the brake lever which is going to entail some welding and then after the welding is done I got to do some cleanup as far as you know grinding the welds down things of that nature and then we'll move on to fitment onto the brake make sure everything's working out right uh, I said this one is going to be pretty simple, straightforward, uh, just good example of what you can do with basic tools. Uh, instead of just using a cheap angle, uh, <clears throat> cheap Harbor Freight vise, uh, I've got cheap uh, Harbor Freight angle grinder, and basically the shop smith I got relatively inexpensive for what it is, and this is just another example of what you can do with basic hand tools and just a little bit of effort and come out with something that's one of a kind and it's pretty awesome. So if this is something that interests you, uh, stick around. I've got many more projects like this planned. Um, for those of you that may not have caught it, the previous videos, I'm working on a 2001 Sportster that I'm kind of converting over to a rat rod. Uh, now this is our third iteration of this bike as far as uh, modifications to it and whatnot. Every few years, you know, we just get bored with it and decide to do something different. So at one time, many years ago, she was a glam queen, custom paint and shiny and everything else. And then she kind of sort of went semi-rat rod and now we're just going to go full-blown rat rod. I'm going to incorporate as many antique and hot rod parts as I can into her. Just give her a whole different look. So if this is something that's going to interest you, hang on. I'm going to see if I can't make this a fun wild ride and let's get going. some shaping we got our part cut out now as you've just seen this is how it's looking we're going to round this off straighten these out a bit and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to convert the shop smith now over to a disc sander and get that done and I'll show you in real time how easy this is to convert as you know I've said once before this has got to be the most valuable as far as usage and my most favorite tool in the garage and I really recommend just about anyone that has any use for one you need to invest in one if you can find one used because they are amazing so what we're going to want to do let's move this over here a little bit closer. Now I've got a problem with where my weight bench is down underneath here, so we're going to make a little bit of a There we go. All right, let's bring this down. Want it right about even with your chuck here. It makes it a lot easier to do everything. So then we pull out our Allen wrench and remove our drill chuck. Then we're going to grab our sanding disc. There you have it. Uh, we've got our sanding disc ready to go. 
I'm not going to bore you with all the shaping in real time. This is the boring part. So I guess we'll get ready to do another time lapse on this so you can see what's going on. Okay, now I got all the initial shaping done. This is our end result. Here's the original part. And to show you, holes came out pretty good. They lined up pretty decent considering this is all done by hand without much precision and it works. So what I am planning to do, that I tried to explain before, is this is going to be mounted this is the center line of the bike. It'll be mounted at an angle about like so. I'm wanting to attach this nut here. And then we're going to attach this wrench, preferably like so. There, this is the original orientation. This was here. So my new plan is I want it here with this attached right there. Hence our new brake pedal with that little bit of rat rod inspiration to it. So my next step is going to be welding this nut onto this plate and this wrench onto this nut and then either connecting a bolt that this matches or what I think would be kind of cool is get a nut that would fit into this end of the wrench and attach it there. But if I do that, you won't be able to see the wrench unless I space it out a little bit. But I kind of like the idea of doing it here because that's what I did with the last one. And it would make my pedal just a little bit shorter, but that's not a problem. If I put it back up here, it'll be almost the exact same dimensions. So I think that'll work. And this will allow me to put the pedal a little bit further forward than what it is. So hang on and that will be the next step getting all this welded together. Alright, I'm going to show you the setup we got here. We're just using a cheap Harbor Freight. Oh, this thing's probably about 10 years old. Harbor Freight uh, Flux Core Welder. It's a 100 amp, does just about everything I need. I think this one thinks it's on steroids because I can't weld anything thin worth a damn with it. Uh, so what we got going on over here, this is the uh, lug nut we're going to attach this wrench to, which in turn is going to be attached to this plate, the mounting plate. So uh, bear with me here, you know, uh, there's probably going to be some welders out there going to freak out, panic, hate, whatever. I'm a self-taught welder. Uh, it gets the job done. Yeah, it's usually not real pretty, but you got to deal with what you're working with. One of these days, I hope to maybe uh, invest in a decent welder and maybe even get some uh, legitimate training. So at that point, just hang tight and let's see if we can get this done. Uh, one tip I can say when you're doing thicker metals like this, it doesn't hurt to heat it up prior to welding, cause especially with the low power welder. Uh, get a better weld you want your contact services heated up pretty good so I'm going to hit a little bit of heat here with a little hand torch and then we'll see about getting this thing connected several welds in the past that welded some relatively thick material and I didn't preheat it and the welds just snapped right off 
So, you know, lesson learned, preheat the metal unless you got a big enough welder. You know, this would actually probably be a really good job for a stick welder. But unfortunately, this is what I got, so I got to work with what I have. This shouldn't take too awful long here, so let's see if we can't burn some metal. work on this welder the other day and I guess I forgot to loosen my spool up. said it's a janky welder if some company out there wants to treat me to a welder I'd really appreciate it penetration going on now.
see what we got. Eh, not too shabby. That'll work for what we're doing. This way it looks on this side just like the wrench is sitting right on the nut. I had to believe that will work. So now I need to clean these welds up a little bit. And uh, I guess we'll go into a time lapse for that. That way it's not so boring. So let me get my tools together here for cleaning this up and I'll be right back with you. So we got that part done. It's, that was the look I was going for, like the wrench is just sitting there. Uh, not the prettiest welds in the world, cleaned up pretty decent. So it's not too shabby. So the next step is I've got to attach this onto here now. So it's just a matter of a couple of welds and we'll get that done and be right back.